Today I'm recording my answers to your questions in the comfort of my car because we're actually camping in the shed while the rest of the kitchen's being put in. So Karen has put this uh, Q&A over some pictures of embroidery. So I hope that you'll enjoy that rather than just looking at me all the time. Okay, so Jenny, Jerry Daniels uh, emailed about loose threads. She said, I haven't heard you address the problem of the loose threads hanging off the edge. Frustrating because I seem to pick them up with my stitches. Do you turn under the ruffled edges? Now, I actually think I did answer this, but I answered the wrong question. I thought you were talking about the loose threads you were leaving hanging of wool, of the actual embroidery thread. But actually, I think from what you're saying now is that uh, it's the ravelled edges. Um, so actually, I overlock the edges and our kits are always overlocked around the edges nowadays. Um, um, and if you're doing your own designs and cutting your own linen, I would always overlock that or just use the zigzag on your machine or do it by hand. It's probably just as quick. So just literally use a, a whipping stitch all the way around the edge. Or if you want to do a little bit more work, you could do a buttonhole stitch around the edge, which is very nice as well. Uh, this is another email from Tamara, who actually was on the Stratford retreat earlier this year. Satin stitch on rabbits at dawn. I've been working on the Scottish play, but I've also been trying to finish the rabbits at dawn for my husband's granddaughter. She sounds nice. We know she's nice. <laughs> I'm not happy with the technique when working the arms and paws of the rabbits. I realised I needed to ask this when I was stitching and watching today's video, and I saw the unicorn horn so beautifully done. Would you do a video going over the satin stitch? Well, actually, I don't even need to do a video um, because actually all you need to do is keep adding more stitches. So if you work your satin stitch, um, usually I try and have an angled satin stitch. And in fact, on the unicorn, the satin stitch didn't really work very well. So I whipped it at an angle. So I, I went straight along the length of the, of the unicorn horn and then whipped it um, on a sort of 45 degree angle. Because, you know, just keep stitching, I say. When something doesn't look right, usually you just keep stitching with cool work. So I would take a, if you've been using the paws on the rabbits at dawn in a double thread, <clears throat> I would then re-thread with a single thread in the same colour and go over the top and keep going over and over and over into the same perimeter of the edge. Don't, don't make it a long, flat, fat paw. Make it a raised, short paw, if you see what I mean. So it's actually, if you're looking at it sideways, it would almost be a 3D effect. <clears throat> so just keep going. An email from Marion Drum. Suggestion for the fonts on the Christmas stockings. I'm thoroughly enjoying your stocking videos and your video on posture was brilliant. Oh, that's nice of her. Thank you. We're going to do another one on posture later. As you were showing how to add the names, I wanted to suggest a tip. If you change the font characteristic so that it, it will add an underline to the word or name that will provide a straight line that can be used for aligning the text. Aha. Uh -huh. So literally in Word, you just put you put it on underline. That's a brilliant idea. Um, and she says, in this case, it might align with or slightly above the stem line. Keep up the great work. Wow. So I've replied, what an amazing top tip. <laughs> so I, I, I'm actually going to video um, what I wish I'd done better with the stocking soon. So, um, you know, I've got a child. The next one wants a rabbit, a unicorn and a rainbow. So I'm, I'm truly challenged with the next one. Uh, but I'll definitely use this method and I will report back to our gang who are all stitching along. There are hundreds of stockings going on all around the world. It's just wonderful. Don't forget to send your pictures in though for our gallery, please. <clears throat> Email Patty Hawkins. She says she's experienced at needlework, however, new to cruel work. And she has two questions. Hello from Central Canada, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Oh, I love that. I'm just loving your videos and meeting all your supporting costs. Thank you. Does she, does she mean the hens on Frankie or Laura or whatever? I don't know. I'm an experienced embroiderer but haven't done too much cruel work. I have two questions. When using a double strand of cruel yarn, I notice that you do not use a laying tool to make the strands lay side by side. Is this ever done in cruel? Now that's a very interesting question because actually across the you know across your side of the world in america and canada and i think possibly australia as well occasionally everybody uses a laying tool and this comes from a sort of tradition of needlepoint and i think 
the quest for perfection as well. Crawl work isn't really that sort of skill. It's actually more about using the bounce in the thread than keeping the threads identical and wonderful and straight and flat. Um, if the threads twist, you just literally turn your frame upside down, let your needle hang down, and the weight of the needle will untwist the thread. So, and there's another technique I use, which is actually just to take the, uh, if you're using a double thread and your, your threads get twisted, just individually pull the end, so the, the little return at the, beyond your needle, that two or three inches of wool that's at the very end, you just individually take each thread and just give it a little pull, and that will make the threads lie parallel on the area you're going to stitch. So the area you're going to use, rather, of the thread. I hope, I, I hope I'm clear in this. I can do a video on that if you want me to. Um, and then she also says, um, when doing long and short, do you ever outline areas in split stitch, then stitch over this line? That's another great question. Everybody asks this. In fine surface work, I've been taught to do this to make the outline more crisp. Is this necessary when using wool? Now, Patty, in crawl work, I have never seen this used when there were professional crawl workers in studios. They tended to just keep going with the threads so to make the edge crisp. So they put more and more and more stitches in over the top of the work already done. So, for example, with a lot of my designs, um, Bird on a Bough, Restoration Pillow, Jacobean Hunt, there's really absolute replicas of the historic pieces they're copying. I've actually used a double thread and then a single thread over the top to really mimic the, the way they did it in the past, which was actually to use multiple layers of stitches. They didn't use a double thread. We're slightly cheating there, but you know, we want we have more of a life now. We want to get finished with these stitches. But using the um, threads over and over again, so if you were looking from the side, those stitches lay flat. There's no sort of troughs in the middle or shadows between the stitches. Always watch out for shadows between the stitches or little bits where it looks as though a mouse is bitten around the edge of your shape and there's little nibbled bits out. Always just put in another three quarter length stitch in a single thread and that really answers a question earlier on about um, satin stitch as well. You can, you know, it's the same technique. And she says, oh, thanks again. I dream someday of coming to one of your tours. Well, that's jolly nice. So do I. I can't wait to get back to travelling around. We've got lots of people all signed up and ready to go. Um, right, from Facebook, Marianne Randall. Turkey work. Response to Meredith's, Meredith's video. Can I share a little tip that works for me? When I make the loop, I wrap the thread around a pencil or even a thicker tube. This keeps my stitches a consistent size. I usually make several stitches before removing it. This also helps me move them out of the way when I work. I totally agree. That's a great trip to tip, Marianne. You'd need a huge pencil to do the main tail, but when we go on to do the uh, rabbit's tail, um, or if you were doing fur on your unicorn, more ambitious of you, um, then we'll have maybe more time than I have at the moment, then uh, yes, absolutely, that's a great tip. And you would soon work out the size of the pencil or pen that you would use. But I'm not an expert on turkey work, so that's why we asked Meredith, who is very, very kindly. So she's M's Canvas House in Kentucky, and she also sells my kits in, um, in her store. <laughs> 